When you talk about aneurysms, or specifically aortic aneurysms, an aneurysm is really an abnormal dilation of the artery. So when I describe it to my patients, I say, think about like a bicycle tire. And you have a bicycle tire and you've got a weakness in the wall of that bicycle tire. When you overinflate it with air, it will bellow out. So that's essentially what an aneurysm is. It's just an abnormality in the wall of the vessel and it will bellow out and it will grow over time. That all depends on size, but that's why we watch it and follow it. So that's why it's very important to be followed, whether it be by us uh, as vascular surgeons or by your primary care doctor if you have been diagnosed with it, with a triple A or another type of aneurysm. People don't even know that they have an aneurysm until it becomes symptomatic. Symptomatic, it could be obviously a rupture would be the most catastrophic. However, you can have folks that have inflammation around the aneurysm or if it's rapidly growing. And so back pain, not I went to pick up three boxes yesterday and my back hurts the next day. No, it's persistent back pain for no real reason. And so, um, but again, that those are the typical symptoms. Oftentimes these are found incidentally. So they're looking for a gallbladder problem or they're looking at a hernia. So you've had an ultrasound or a CT scan and that's typically just found incidentally. Um, but uh, when we follow them, however, if we have a diagnosis of an aneurysm, then we'll follow it typically once, typically with an ultrasound until it gets to a point where it may need to be fixed and then we'll get a CT scan to define the anatomy and figure out what we need to do. For the most part, if you think about this, the folks who have the family history of an aneurysm, those are the folks who are at the highest risk, okay? And so then the folks who are men typically over the age of 65 who have a longstanding history of smoking, uh, people who have high blood pressure, uh, people who are, have COPD or are smokers. So those are typically the people who are at risk for an aneurysm. And it's important to diagnose these things early if you have these risk factors. So if it ruptures, then you know there's a probability that you could not survive. As we follow these things over time, I always tell my patients, it's almost like putting a melon out in the garden. So you're gonna watch it grow over time. And typically, if you have a, a, a a stable aneurysm, it may grow one to three millimeters a year. Okay, however, it may grow fast. So that's may, that may be why, you, why, why we wanna follow these things because the faster it grows or the bigger it grows, the higher your risk of it rupturing. And once it meets that threshold where the risk of fixing it, it's much less than the risk of it busting. Uh, that's when we go ahead and get, again, a CT scan to identify the anatomy and kind of figure out how best to treat the problem. Back in the day, we used to, uh, and we still do this uh, less, less often than we do now, but we used to fix them through a big abdominal incision, go in there and essentially sew you in a new piece of pipe. Well, nowadays we do it much less invasively through a couple of small little incisions in the groin. The recovery is much faster and the risk is much lower. So if you look at this problem, really this is the aneurysm here. This is that abnormal wall in that, that, that tube so when we fix it minimally invasively now, just as you remember with that bicycle tire, we would go in and line that tube from good to good to fix it from the inside of that tube. Well, if you think about it like an aneurysm in a person, this is a tube that splits. It's not like a bicycle tire. So I call it a reinforced pair of pants. So this is essentially a stent, okay, or a stent graft. So this is that repair where we fix it from good to good it's lined with a fabric and reinforced with, with struts or metal stents, okay? So that's how we fix it nowadays. Those patients can have it done and go home the next day or in a couple of days, depending on how complex the repair is. I think it's important to recognize, are you at risk? Do you have an aunt? Do you have an uncle? Do you have a grandfather? Do you have a great grandfather that had an aneurysm? You're at risk. Are you a male over the age of 65? Or are you a long-standing smoker? Are you a, a hypertensive patient? Do you have COPD? Those are the ones who are at risk. Do I need to be screened? Go talk to your primary care doctor. Get a simple ultrasound. That's, the, that's what you need to do.